looking at, I guess, um, you know, in, in terms of delta, that there, w there should be some correlation. If we're under predicting the supply air temperature in the heating season, you know, so if it's actually 45 degrees um, Celsius or something and we're predicting it's 40 degrees, you would expect the zone to be cooler. So um, I, I think this answers the question that, yes, there should be a correlation and looking at them side by side certainly could help um, understand that correlation. Ah, and they just said, not next to you, just match the colors. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then a couple other things that we've got in here as well. Um, have we gone through seasons and various temperature conditions to see if condensation builds up? Um, example, unconditioned attic in the winter if heat is pushed through the PVC. Um, that was one of the statements as well, or questions as well. One, one of the um, benefits of the small diameter is is uh, to be able to realize the intent to keep the ductwork within the conditioned envelope. So that, that's a primary objective with, with this system. Um, the possibility for condensation would exist also in the cooling season, and that's the season that we're just embarking upon. Um, and, you know, being able to uh, have this experience that we've had so far um, and, you know, explore the insulation issues is actually helping us uh, derive the, the characteristics that we think we need for the final solution. Uh, so to, to put that in a nutshell, we, we, we are curious and we are uh, eager to explore that when the cooling season comes um, and we're prepared to, to uh, rigorously evaluate that for condensation, but also for energy and comfort. And there was one other suggestion on here, which I thought was interesting and good. Um, for later, when we're doing more research into this, um, to measure the decibels associated with the new system and going from a two-inch two inch ducting and expanding distributing to a larger register. So to see, yep. um, because that could be conceived as, while it's not a thermal comfort issue, that could be conceived as a comfort issue because of noise. Yeah, it's all, it's all parts of uh, the indoor environmental quality, and it's something that we, uh, we certainly um, intend to be uh, evaluating and sensitive to. Uh, we don't want to have that sort of issue um, go unexplored, okay. un understood. And um, there's a couple more, a couple more uh, bits of information we're going to go through on the proposed solution as well as some of the next steps. Um, the last question I've got so far was, can I get a copy of this webinar? Again, yes, absolutely. Um, we'll send you a PDF of the slide deck um, as well as uh, we'll get back to you later when the archive of the webinar um, from a video perspective is available. Um, just so in case anyone drops off at 1 o'clock Eastern time, um, for those of you who are on the phone, we also have a, um, the Alliance Innovation Summit in Chicago in two weeks. It's the 8th through the 10th. On the 10th in the morning, for those of you who are going to be joining us, we're going to do an abbreviated version of this discussion, and there's also a session on um, doing um, individualized uh, HVAC design based on house orientation that iEngineer is going to be sharing. And part of that discussion will have um, table-based discussions where some of the comments we've heard so far about testing for sound and um, testing for condensation, where you can give us other feedback like that related to the testing methodology, what concerns you might have of how this would be launched into the industry. That's going to be a key part of that discussion on the 10th. Um, and I will send a link out for the event as well in case there's anyone who um, is interested in participating and isn't already, um, but just wanted to make you aware that we'll be talking about this more in depth there as well. Um, so, and then uh, that's it for questions at the moment. We've got another Q&A at the end. And um, yes, we addressed the decibels, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna we are gonna um, measure uh, just so just before we <laughs> before we move on. We are gonna to look at the sound as well. Uh, it's not something that we've done yet, but we did address that. Um, so I will turn the floor back over to you guys. We've got seven minutes technically. We might go over maybe five minutes to wrap up, um, but take it away. Yeah, great questions, everybody. Thank you. So we talked a little bit about the you know the why and the how. 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the what here. Now, recognize we're, the, the project is not complete. We've still got parts of our various tasks to complete, and, and they all need to interrelate um, as they develop. So, but we have some vision about our proposed solution. Um, so some of this will be a little bit of summary, but um, we'll kind of wrap it up here. So we're developing um, the simplified small diameter residential air delivery system as a solution to the air distribution and comfort delivery issues that are being recognized in low loan production um, built homes. And I'll say that there's also you know, going to be um, an extrapolation of that to, to de determine what the actual boundary points would be, if any, for the ap application range of this, of this approach. So one of, the, one of the things that we'll be doing uh, and, and providing as, as a result of the work we're doing is um, we believe that we'll be defining um, characteristics of a material that doesn't ex exist just yet or is not commercially available um, in a fashion that meets um, some of the necessary criteria that exists out there. So um, what I mean by this is we're going to have some optimum pressure drop characteristic, you know, airflow pressure relationship that we want a material to have. Um, cer certainly thermal properties and effective R value or U value as it was stated uh, as we were feeding into the model. You know, um, mass characteristics are, are playing a role here with, with the, the temperatures and, and, and uh, how well we distribute the, the um, furnace or air conditioner supply air temperature all the way to the room. Durability of the materials and its, it's uh, hand, the ability to be handled in the field. Certainly the cost for the material itself and also the installation uh, procedures. The rigidity and flexibility characteristics, we're, we've actually found that you know, a material that, that is super rigid is actually much more difficult to install, even if it's small diameter. If we had a material that was generally rigid um, um, without being uh, very, uh, I guess, uh, uh, loose or um, in, you know, very flexible like a flex duct, but if there was some medium ground there that allows without, allows actually to bend it as it's being installed, but like then it, the like like pecs, <laughs> but then it would return to its more rigid, uh, straight, fairly straight uh, condition for its uh, use as a duct. That that's a, there's an optimum condition there that we we are. We have seen already with our own work, and we expect to get feedback on once we do the, the time to motion studies. And certainly, uh, something we haven't talked about, well, about yet, but certainly things like flame spread and smoke development. Um, we're using PVC right now in our testing as, a, as what we believe would be a surrogate. Um, unless PVC ends up being accepted in the marketplace, which is, yeah, frankly, it's an area that we're going to be doing some pushing to see you know, just how far uh, can we go with that. But, but recognizing that a lot of the current industry situation is um, recognizing flame spread, spread and smoke development limitations, we feel that we will be incorporating that into this material spec. Um, and then possibly looking at uh, incremental tube sizes. We, we may not say, say that we want just two, two and a half, and three inch round ductwork. We, we may be going with um, odd diameters, uh, maybe not every tenth of an inch, but but several other than just those even half inches. Um, and um, what I'll show here is just, you know, if we had incremental tube sizes, uh, if we look at velocity as a metric, and we can look at this a couple different ways, but if we look at air velocity as a metric for different air flows from 15 CFM to 50 CFM, that's across the top, for different duct diameters, so that's two inches to three inches down the left-hand side, looking at what's, what's the air velocity of all those different different combinations. And if we set a threshold, for, for the purpose of this discussion, we'll set a threshold at 1,000 feet per minute. Um, we, all, every, all the data points in green are below that as far as air velocity. And then we've got sort of a boundary layer where it, it's close to 1,000 and a little bit less than 1,100. Those are the yellow, the yellow uh, cells. And then the red cells are the ones that are showing, hey, it's over 1,100 feet per minute. Um, and for this illustration, we're saying, hey, anything in the green would be something that we, we were going to entertain for um, the, a delivery, acceptable delivery condition. And we're seeing that we, we gain, and this is to Andrew's point, we're gaining great advantages with the amount of airflow that we can put through, um, through a duct if we can get a 2.8 inch inside diameter, for example. And something that will play a role here as this moves forward is, you know, what is the wall thickness? What is the effective R value of, of, of that wall thickness? Um, and you know how close can we get to say three inches for the maximum outside dimension of this of this duct, so that it still fits within all the cavities in the in the structure that we want them to. 
Um, we may find that you know we'll go every two or three tenths of an inch with different sizes rather than they're on the half inch, and it'll give us some more uh, so, some more fine selection opportunities. We're, we're, we're showing a, a, a uh, a generalized uh, airflow and pressure chart on the bottom, and the point of showing that is just to, to recognize that you know ultimately um, velocity isn't our only criteria as you know, for, for selecting how much air can go through a given size duct. It's certainly the the pressure drop, and it's not only the pressure drop uh, per per meter as, as is what is shown in in the uh, the table or the chart below, but it's actually the the pressure drop for the for the given length. So we've we've got you know a lot of considerations that we'll be bringing to the table as we go out and and uh, talk with potential manufacturers and material suppliers um, in order to fill what right now feels like a gap in material availability. But uh, to sort of summarize and bring some of this, these things back into a nutshell as to what this is and, and how it's going to what the complexion is going to be for the system. A you know, plug-and-play system will have lower pressure drop at small sizes as compared to conventional systems that have low pressure but at the larger sizes. Uh, plug-and-play will be thermally resistive um, in, in the duct wall. Um, conventional systems require insulation. We want to we want to see that built into the to the actual structure of the duct. Um, the, the, our system, the plug-and-play, would fit within framing, while the larger duct work uh, conventionally requires soffits. Uh, the home run arrangement, allowing sort of an express lane from the furnace or air conditioner all the way to the room, uh, to each room, that's a possibility with plug and play, and it opens up several advantages. Um, you know, that would be as compared to the trunk and branch or extended plenum systems uh, for conventional systems. And looking at a different set of cr criteria for constructability and cost, uh, plug and play, we believe, is going to have a lower installed cost, even though material cost could end up being higher with the set of criteria that we're that we think we'll be applying to it. Um, there'll be a few unique components, you know, one, just one or two sizes, maybe three at the most in, in this system. Uh, it's going to be semi-rigid, we believe, uh, that's what we're hoping for, for quicker and easier installation, uh, and simple connections and attachments, whereas uh, with conventional duct systems, we have higher installed cost, multiple sizes, you know, multiple products or SKUs, uh, um, rigid multi-step installation processes, uh, extended site time, and certainly extra steps where there has to be a joint or, or a duct takeoff. Now, there are two questions that have come in since we did Q&A before that kind of relate to the stuff that you're talking about right now. So before you do next then, um, the first one is, would the air handle, handler be a typical current off-the-shelf unit, or would it be specialized small diameter system like a Unico? There are um, a few manufacturers, uh, there's several manufacturers right now that are offering systems that are the lower capacity, although in general there's a few players in that field right now, and that's one of the challenges that, that exists in the lower load home marketplace right now. So we'd like to see more manufacturers in that arena, but the intention would be that, that, those, that those manufacturers would have uh, um, would, would, would have equipment and that this system would be compatible with, with those systems. And again, you said, um, I think at one point you said somewhat rigid, somewhat flexible. Yeah, semi-rigid. Semi-rigid. Yeah. Um, there was a comment here, and I think you kind of addressed it before, but I just want to bring it back yeah. again in case. Um, um, has there been any thought of using a wide diameter PEX type tube instead of PVC? Yes, we have uh, about 30 or 40 feet of that on our warehouse floor at the moment. So we've done some testing with that. It's one of the alternate materials that we've been looking at. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a material that we want to do some more testing with and actually get it into the lab house at some point as well. Isn't that super or a bit more flexible than perhaps you'd want and where there may be an issue with not having a straight enough pathway mm -hmm. for air to flow. Yeah, and we think that velocity. doing that will help provide us with one boundary condition. The most, you know, the rigid PVC will provide us with another boundary condition, and so we can help define sort of the ideal properties. Okay. By cool. doing that. So uh, some next steps sort of come at, at, at to mind at this point, um, and within the project scope, you know, there's. We have a lot of tasks that are unfinished, and as I said, they're all sort of interrelated, but we're going to continue to, to characterize the pressure and airflow relationships. Um, we've done a lot of that for the sort of the base materials and surrogate materials, but we're expanding that into all kinds of alternate materials looking for opportunities. Um, 
we're, we're using the model, we'll be characterizing the installed performance of the plug and play system that's using the simulation model. And also in the model, we'll be comparing that performance to traditional um, air distribution system approaches. And so we've got the model to a point now where we can begin to do that. Uh, the model will also help us define the range of application of the system in terms of how size, the loading characteristics, you know, the climate, uh, all sorts of variables uh, that, that, that may exist. We would like to see this, this type of system be able to uh, get market share uh, in as many places as possible, in as many home types as possible. And then I went into some detail about identifying acceptable material, material properties. And related to that is, is uh, we've done some of this work, but we need, need to do a little more of it. We, we need to get a little more um, code community uh, interaction. We want to uh, be able to have that discussion with code officials. Um, we, we, we see that there's uh, some, I'll say misunderstanding or, or lack of clarity with the way the codes are, are currently written um, when it comes to plastic ductwork. There's some materials where there's inter some interpretations that they are allowable in duct systems right now. However, a lot of, a lot of people in that arena are not, um, not seeing it that way. So the point there is there's a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion to be had and some clarity to, to, brought, to, to be brought um, forth about the existing codes and then what are the opportunities uh, if there can be adjustments made to, to the codes. Um, doing more with the analyzing the, the cost installation impacts, finalizing the, the design methodology which would feed into that cost um, exercise. We're going to have the opportunity to do the cooling season evaluations. Um, we'll develop the installation guidance to go along with our design methodology and ultimately you know the sort of the, the crux of all this is to secure interest from interested builder partners and manufacturing partners. Um, and so we're, we're taking every opportunity we can to, to communicate uh, these topics with um, people from uh, those parties to, uh, to consider that they may want to participate with us as we move forward. And, There's, and some of the people on the phone today are actually um, trade partners of builders that we work with. Mm -hmm. So if you as a trade are participating today and it's something that you're interested in, you'd be willing to um, work with on us as well, certainly um, you know, we'll, we'll send you as part of the follow-up uh, an opportunity to, to reach back out to us. And these slides also have Tim and, and uh, Andrew's contact information as well. Um, but don't want to don't want to shut the door to you if you're a trade contractor who's participated in today's session as far as reaching back out and expressing interest um, as well. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, good, great points. Um, and then, sort of beyond the scope of the project as is defined, and, and uh, our current timeline allows us to uh, to evaluate a number of additional material options that we may not have had a chance to do before. But but in addition to that, you know. There's um, there's the sort of the air distribution angle or the uh, the actual throw and mixing device. So there would be a diffuser. You know, is there something that we can do in that area that that um, would be sort of after this this project completes? Uh, there are commissioning procedures that can help um, sort of dial this in even even more. Can we advocate for more? And I mentioned this a little while ago. Advocate for more low capacity equipment options in the marketplace uh, to help drive the uh, the low load home market um, to be all it can be. And then are there you know, tools that can help the installation process? Uh, you know, would it be some sort of a guide that goes on, on, a, on a drill or on a hole saw to you know, very accurately, precisely drill holes through plates for, for these systems to go and things, things along those lines. So I mean, there's, there's, there's things that sort of fall out of any thought that this place to how the, these systems would be installed and then used. Uh, so we, we see that there's opportunities there. We won't get into a lot of detail today, but um, that we see that there's activity for us moving forward. So I think with that, uh, if there's any more questions, we'd like to entertain those at this time, if, if, if anyone would like to stick around. Um, there aren't any questions on here. If you just want to click on to the next slide mm -hmm. and see that your contact information is in here. There aren't any other questions that have come in since we kind of addressed them as we were going. Um, but as Tim has said and, I'll, and Andrew has said, I'll just kind of reiterate this. This is an ongoing project um, at this point uh, with the Building America program. The stuff the stuff on the first two next step slides were really things that are part of that effort. The one that he just showed you is really what we would like to do beyond it um, as Ibicus. Um, but we will certainly keep you guys um, connected and share this information with you. 
whether it's us sharing a copy of a report that we do for Building America, if we do another webinar, if we send you an article related to this, uh, but we'll keep you abreast of, of where we are in the process here and um, certainly as you get this with their contact information, if you do want to be directly engaged in this, um, and there you'd have the benefit of hearing from your trade contractors how easy it was to install. Um, you could see firsthand up front as it's being developed what some of the cost and cycle time benefits might be also um, and get you know some assistance with us in implementing this as well as um, I would imagine there's monitoring that goes along with that from a poor, and Andrew's shaking his head yes um, from a performance perspective. Um, so if you if you were to participate directly with us, you would have access to that data as well, which could be of interest. Oh, there are two other questions um, so that I don't um, know that those came in. Um, so I don't cut anyone off. We'll answer those two questions as we are at almost 10 after 1, and then we will sign off. Um, and, but feel free to send any additional questions that you have to Tim, Andrew, or myself. You'll have my information once you get the follow-up details, um, and we will coordinate getting those answers to you. But the last two questions for today, um, the first is, would ERV, HRV be incorporated into the system? Uh, yes, I mean that would be um, through more. It could be through traditional approaches where the the air coming in from that system goes into the um, the air handling unit and then is fed into this air distribution system. There there are several different arrangements, but I don't think that anything we're doing here would preclude that opportunity. Okay, um, and then the last one is what about humidity concerns in a high latent environment? Yeah, so the, uh, to some degree, the, uh, the insulation discussion plays a role there with any sort of insulation, uh, humidity and uh, condensation con concerns, but also you know, making sure that we distribute the air effectively throughout the home. And this is why I talked about mixing and throw. We want to be able to get the, the cooling effect and dehumidification effect distributed everywhere it needs to go. We, we don't want to have any uh, uh, shortcomings or shortfalls in that part of the distribution uh, system requirements. You know the job that it needs to do. And the, um, as far as as far as that goes, I recall um, from the lab home that we did uh, we had sensors within the walls monitoring for um, condensation in the walls. And imagine if that's a concern in this area, that's a possibility from a monitoring perspective. Mm -hmm. In a, in a test environment as well. Yeah. yeah, and these systems lend themselves very well to variable speed equipment, which uh, just by definition have, have a, you know, a great ability to address um, things like humidity and, and uh, um, do that in, in a creative and, and energy efficient way.